we already saw. Let's discuss. Previously, previously we discussed the electron clouds or the wave functions that are produced by our electron when it's found in the ground state of the hydrogen atom that's given by quantum state 1s and the excited state that is given by 2s. And we saw that the shape of our electron clouds was in the form of a sphere. Now let's suppose our electron transition transitions from the quantum state given by 2s, where 2 stands for the principal quantum number and s stands for the orbital quantum number L equals 0, suppose now the electron transitions to a higher quantum state that is given by the following two quantum numbers. So now the quantum number is, the principal quantum number is n equals 2 and the orbital quantum number is no longer 0. but it's equal to 1. The question is, what exactly will be the shape and the size and orientation of the electron cloud, the orbital, that will be produced by the electron within this quantum state? So basically, to solve this question, we can use Schrodinger's equation. If we solve Schrodinger's equation, we can obtain the wave function or functions that describe this particular electron within this particular excited quantum state within the hydrogen atom. So once again, we're not going to focus on the mathematical details of solving Schrodinger's equation to obtain these wave functions. Instead, we're going to simply give you these wave functions and describe what the meaning is behind these wave functions. So we see that after solving Schrodinger's equation, there's not not one solution, but three different solutions, and each one of these solutions corresponds to its own magnetic quantum number. So each one of these solutions represents the same principal quantum number of n equals 2 and the same uh, orbital quantum number of l equals 0, but the magnetic quantum number for the first solution is 0, the magnetic quantum number for the second solution is ml equals positive 1, and the magnetic quantum for the third solution for the third wave function is given by ml equals negative 1. So basically each one of these wave functions creates its own orbital, its own electron, electron cloud that has its own shape, orientation, and size in the three-dimensional space. So we see that the electron can be described using either one of these three wave functions where each wave function produces an orbital or an electron cloud with its own shape shape, orientation, and size. So let's begin by examining wave function number one. In fact, we're only going to examine wave function number one in this lecture. So one way that we can actually take this wave function and make it physically meaningful and measurable is by transforming it into the probability density. So we basically take the square of the absolute value of this wave function to produce the probability density density as shown in the following diagram. So we basically take the right side and multiply it by itself to produce this function. Now, the probability density of this function basically tells us the probability of finding our electron along the z-axis. And if we actually plot this along the following three-dimensional plane, where this is the x-axis, the y-axis is coming out of the board, and the z-axis is this vertical axis, we get the following depiction. We get the following diagram in which we see two very dense regions one lies along the positive along the positive section of the z axis and the other one lies along the negative direction along the negative section of our z axis now these two very dense regions basically represents the regions where our electron is most likely found 
So basically, when the electron is found within uh, wave function number one within this electron cloud, that electron has a very high probability of being either within this region or within this region. So once again, we can see the dense regions lie along the z-axis for this particular case. Now we can also draw our probability densities for wave function 2 and wave function 3 and the only difference will be really these two functions will lie along the xy plane. So, from this diagram, we see that these highly dense regions represent a high probability of finding the electron within these three sections. So, we see that individually, these wave functions produce electron clouds that do not actually have a spherical shape, as the case was with the 1s and the 2s quantum states in which the electron did in fact produce an electron cloud, an orbital, that did have a spherical shape. For this case, the shape of our orbits individually is not exactly spherical. It looks something like this. Now, the question is the following. If we have three different electron clouds, if we have three different orbitals in which our one electron can be found, in which one of these orbitals is the electron most likely to be found? So, in the absence of any external field, for example, in the absence of a magnetic field, the three-way functions produce electron clouds, also known as orbitals that are equal in energy and that means that the electron is equally likely to be found in either one of these three orbitals. So remember, electrons want to be within that state that is lower in energy and which is closer to the nucleus. And because in the absence of any external magnetic field, for example, these three-way functions produce orbitals that are equal in energy, the electron is likely to be found in either one of these three orbitals. So this basically means that we can think of the electron as spending one-third of its time in each orbital. So basically, the electron spends one-third of of its time in the orbital given by wave function 2, one-third of its time in the second orbital, and the remaining one-third of its time in the last orbital. Now the question is, can we actually somehow combine all these probabilities, all the probability densities of these three functions to actually, uh, to actually form a more general picture of, of what our electron cloud actually looks like? So the answer is yes we can. So basically, if we combine the probability densities of each one of these wave functions, that should basically give us the total probability of finding our electron anywhere within these three orbitals, within the three orbitals that are given by these three wave functions. And notice that this equation, this sum, has the form of x squared plus y squared plus z squared and this has the form of a symmetrical sphere. So in fact if we take this sum and transform the sum into the radial probability distribution given by PR and then plot the radial probability distribution of this sum on the y-axis and the distance r from the center of our nucleus on the x-axis we get the following curve. And notice the structure, the form of this curve has the same exact form as the curve for the 1s which had a completely spherical shape. So that means if we combine the orbital, the electron cloud in our uh, due to wave function number 1, due to wave function number 2, and due to wave function number 3, those three orbitals jointly create a spherical shape. 
And that's exactly why we get the following single peak. So this single peak simply means that if this particular radius, whatever this radius is, it's about equal to 4 multiplied by r naught, where r naught is Bohr's radius. This is the radius that corresponds to the probability of highest probability of finding our electron a distance, a certain distance away from our center of that nucleus.